Let's begin with Mark 3.25. If a house is divided against itself, that house cannot stand. We could be looking at a business or school, a special group of people, government or a church, but our topic is about spouses, so let's focus on the house of a family. One must ask these questions. What are my spouse's righteous desires? And how can I accomplish these in context of doing what is right in the sight of the Lord? This can help narrow some things down. For example, if your spouse wants to perform idol worship, watch pornography, or rob someone, you know these are wrong in the eyes of your Creator, so saying no is your best response. But what about the things that are righteous? How do you respond to those? Are you helpful and respectful, encouraging and loving, engaging and interested? How do you speak about your spouse when they are not around? Do you brag about their goodness or do you belittle who they are? Proverbs 12, 4 An excellent wife is the crown of her husband, but she who shames him is like rottenness in his bones. 1 Peter 3, 7 In the same way you husbands must give honor to your wives, treat your wife with understanding as you live together. She may be weaker than you are, but she is your equal partner in God's gift of new life. Treat her as you should, so your prayers will not be hindered. What about your thought life? Do you think about being with your spouse, or are you fixated on another? If you love your spouse, yet you find yourself thinking about someone else, and you've kept your ears, eyes, and language pure, this is just an imagination that is trying to exalt itself against the knowledge of God. It wants to make a root so sin can grow. The knowledge of God in this situation is your marriage. God created marriage, but Satan will send fiery darts. You just need to know how to handle the imaginations so you don't take ownership of them. Have a look at 2 Corinthians 10.5. We demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God, and we take captive every thought and make it obedient to Christ. So your resistance may sound something like this. No, I do not take the thought of having another person over my spouse. You will not lay root in my soul. I loose you now and replace you with God's perfect love towards my spouse. Saying this out loud is warfare on behalf of your marriage in this situation. Continue to do this and the lie will decimate to the truth in Christ that you want to be with your spouse and no other. Husbands are instructed to love and honor their wives and wives are instructed to submit to their husbands as to the Lord. Ephesians 5.25 For husbands, this means love your wives just as Christ loved the church. He gave up his life for her. Ephesians 5.22 For wives, this means submit to your husbands as to the Lord. Meaning the wife transmits respect to her husband who gives everything for the sake of his family under God's authority as leader. But remember, there are consequences from the Lord if he does not love and honor his wife. It's his prayers that will be hindered, not the wife's. He has more obligation to lead accurately and benevolently, and when he leads like this, the wife will be happy to acknowledge and agree with how he manages. God displays outstanding consideration for a husband who finds an honorable wife in Scripture. Proverbs 31, 10, and 11 who can find a virtuous and capable wife? She is more precious than rubies. Her husband can trust her, and she will greatly enrich his life. Proverbs 18.22 He who finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor from the Lord. It is clear that spouses have different roles and conduct in achieving what the other person requires. 
Both are instructed to live for God while honoring the other person.